Hello, everybody. So as I record this, MicroStrategy has gone parabolic. I've had to change my thumbnail three times, so I'm done changing it. I'm recording the video right now. $442 uh, is what the stock is at. The journey has been wonderful. 15% today, the performance is nuts. And these were the screenshots that I made on October 24. I was talking about my, how MicroStrategy and Bitcoin were some of my largest positions. You can see the stock was trading at $424 pre split, right? So that's more than a 10x from when I was covering it. And of course, few people were interested in Bitcoin and in that stock back then. And now it's it's under the spotlight. Bitcoin and MicroStrategy is under the spotlight. But this is a long term hold. This is a long term investment. I am trying to answer the question today. Will it rise even more? Will MicroStrategy rise even more? So let's go. First of all, it's worth noting, so we've had two at the um, um, market ATMs, at the market offerings, right? So we've had, we've had two common offerings within the past nine days. And so he's issued the common and bought the Bitcoin. And you can see that Sailor did very well because he did issue a, a bunch of commons to buy coins um, when it was trading at 74,000. And then he did the same thing at, at 88,000. And then yesterday evening, we learned that he was also going to do a convertible bond again, a, conver a convertible senior note. And so as I, as I read the note, of, of course, what everybody's so excited about is, is the 0%. It's a 0% note, which is crazy because that means that there's not going to be any debt service. So he's borrowing without any debt service. We saw that Marathon Digital was able to do that. And Sailor retweeted that Marathon Digital borrowed more than a billion dollars at a 0% coupon. Same thing here. He's trying to raise up to $2 billion with the additional 250 at 0% due in 2029. And that's going to be due either in the form of cash or in the form of stock based on the trading price of today, roughly. So per my understanding, he's essentially um, diluting. It's, uh, to me, this is, this is very much the same as issuing a common stock but that common stock's going to be issued in 2029. And so 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 it's it's kind of akin to issuing common right now and 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 betting on the price to NAV at 2.68 and so you're issuing your your premium you're, you're monetizing your premium you're you're issuing at 2.6 times the price of bitcoin and then you're buying bitcoin today so you're monetizing your premium today what he's doing with convertible is that he's monetizing the premium of today at a later date so they will convert at the premium of today but at a later date and so in that in that situation well you end up not diluting right away so in the short term you win but you also win in the long run if the price to nav in the long in the long run is something like a five and so a major part of of this this thesis is guessing what will the price to net asset value be for micro strategy in the future is it going to be uh, is it going to be a 2.6 or is it going to go up back to a 10 micro strategy as traded before at a price to net asset value of 10x is it is it going to go back to there right now we we pay more by buying, buying micro strategy we pay much more for the bitcoin right now but it could go much higher that price to to book proverbial book i'm gonna call it that price to book could get much higher and so how high could it get well let's do the calculation and for this for for the for, for the sake of simplicity i'm gonna assume the software business is worth a billion dollars which is roughly roughly what it was worth some people may say 800 million but let's assume the software business is worth a billion dollars and then so we add the billion dollars to the bitcoin that they own they own 31 billion dollars worth of bitcoin so that's a total of 32 billion. The market cap as of 
two hours ago when I was making the slides was 86 billion. So 86 billion divided by 32 billion, that's how you get the price to book, which, which I essentially call the price to NAV. Same thing to me because I'm, I'm just counting the, the software business valued at a billion. We're getting, we're, we're getting a P2B of essentially a 2.68. Let's call it a 2.7. And so all companies trade at a multiple of their asset value, of their net asset value. Now, book value as seen by accountants is extremely imperfect, right? Because these banks are carrying loans on the books that are much more valuable on the books than what they are actually valuable if they were put up for sale, right? And you have a lot of, of depreciation uh, that, that, that goes into play. Some, some assets are not depreciated fast enough. Some assets are depreciated too fast. And then you have the issue of goodwill, right? Which, which, which is a joke, which is a total joke, right? Goodwill counts as, as an asset give me a break you just overpaid for an acquisition but anyways this is not a video about accounting let's assume that book value is correct let's assume that and you know it's it's never going to be as correct in my view no investment advice but it's never going to be as good as counting the bitcoin but let's assume it's correct if we assume it's correct jp morgan is trading at 2.1 times book value so MicroStrategy is more expensive. Exxon, 1.9. Vornado. So why did I put Vornado? It's Manhattan Real Estate. It's trading at 1.9. I think it's it's relevant to look at that because MicroStrategy often compares Bitcoin as a better Manhattan or as a better real estate. And so, of course, the, the, the book value of, of MicroStrategy is mostly going to be Bitcoin. It's mostly going to be Bitcoin. Uh, and, so, and so it trades at a multiple of Bitcoin. So... Is Bitcoin a, a, a technology asset? Is, is, it a, is it technological book value? I believe absolutely so. And the question that we have as, uh, to ask ourselves is, do, does, does, a, does a Bitcoin-based book value, should it trade closer to what technological companies trade at? Because, because Bitcoin is first and foremost a modern 21st century technology. It's a digital asset, right? What companies deals with digital property and digital assets. Well, I can think of, uh, of three of them, right? Two of them are major AI plays, right? Tesla and NVIDIA, major AI plays. It's trading at a 15x book value, 61x book value for NVIDIA. And then Apple, which is, which is a, you know, a pure play mobile network, which is also something that Sailor has always been fascinated by, fascinated by Apple stock and this network of phones. Um, you know, it's a, it's a platform, it's a technological platform, it's a digital platform, just like Bitcoin is digital money, right? It's trading at 61 times. So 61 times, 61 times, 15 times. Where could this go? Is 2.6 the right metric? Is it somewhere in the middle? That's where I put the Bitcoin here. Is it somewhere in the middle between a tech company and an old world oil company on our old world real estate or old world bank? I think it's probably somewhere in the middle. So, and that's the bet that a lot of people are gonna t are making is that that price expansion, uh, that multiple expansion is gonna happen. The question is. What, what multiple of book should, should MicroStrategy be trading at? That's a big question. What's the premium that we put on the astute management of MicroStrategy and the ability of Sailor to generate lee, yield? What, what, what premium do we put? And so let's talk about the yield. And, and this is where I have a few novel points to consider in all of my, my MicroStrategy video, if you follow. This is, this, is, this is somewhat novel. So let's look at it this way. Today, we are paying, if someone buys MicroStrategy today, we are paying 2.68 times net asset value. It's mostly Bitcoin. So we ignore the, the BI business for the sake of simplicity. By the way, for the sake of simplicity, I think MicroStrategy would be better off just spinning off the BI business, just spin it off, and then run the whole MicroStrategy company with 10 people. You, you could totally do that. That's what Tever does. You don't need to have 2,000 employees to run the MicroStrategy play playbook. 10 people, a few Bloomberg terminals, a few accountants, a few, a few people who understand finance, and you can, you can do that, right? That's the story of Tether. So, so maybe the market would be less confused if they actually spun off that business. I'm sure I'm not the only one who comes up with this idea. You get that billion, you sell the business, and then you just buy Bitcoin. But anyways, putting that aside, let's assume uh, it's mostly Bitcoin. At this point, it's mostly a Bitcoin company. So a Bitcoin ETF versus MicroStrategy. 
If you look at a Bitcoin ETF, a Bitcoin ETF trades at one times or 100% NAV. So if you spend $93,000, you're going to get one Bitcoin via the ETF. At the end of year one in 12 months, you'll have one Bitcoin. And at the end of year 10, you'll also have one Bitcoin. It doesn't change across the year. You will have one Bitcoin at the end of year 10 and you have a Bitcoin today. And I'm using the Bitcoin example. Actually, with an ETF, you, you probably are going to have something like 99% of a Bitcoin. So 0, 0 0.98 or 0 0.99 because of the fees, depending on which Bitcoin ETF you're investing in. Now, let's compare this to MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy, you overpay for the Bitcoin. You overpay but you get a yield in exchange. You overpay, but you get a yield. So how does it go work if you, if you buy MicroStrategy stock? Buy MicroStrategy stock, spend $93,000. You're going to get the equivalent of 0 0.37 Bitcoin. But that Bitcoin is wrapped into MicroStrategy and you get a yield on that Bitcoin. Now, what, what are they going to achieve this year in terms of yield? They're already at 41%. We know they're issuing another major convertible bond. As soon as it's issued, they're going to buy. So what's the BTC yield going to be this year? Let's assume you bought at the beginning of the year or on, 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 in January 2024, you bought. Let's assume that it's November 24. Let's assume at the end of year one, at the end, at December 2024, your yield is likely going to be something like a 50%. So all of a sudden, assuming you, you bought 93 to get 0.37 Bitcoin, your 0.37 Bitcoin turns into 0 0.56. And then in year two, next year, let's assume what they're gonna, what are they going to earn on a Bitcoin yield. Let's assume 25%. So it turns into 0 0.69. And then let's assume the higher end of our guidance. I think this is heavily sandbagged. But let's assume they're going to do a 9% yield every year for the seven remaining years right here. So 9%, 9%, 9%. So you can see... Your Bitcoin, at the end of a 10-year period, adding all of the yields, you're getting at the end of year 10 to owning 1.38 Bitcoin. You own 1.38 Bitcoin. You started with 0 0.37 Bitcoin. That's the power of the Bitcoin yield. And so over the short term, you're going to be the prey of changes in price to net asset value ratio. But over the long run, the growth in Bitcoin in the underlying asset should more than mitigate the potential volatility or the potential loss due to the change in the price to NAV. Now, let's go through more scenarios, right? More scenarios. So let's assume, beyond my scenario one here of 50%, let's assume we're just going to do 25% over the next 12 months, then 15% in year two, and in year three, 9% up until year 10 in that case, spend 93000 today, get 0 0.37 Bitcoin. At the end of year 10, you would have 1.06 Bitcoin. So your time yielded Bitcoin, assuming that. Now, let's assume we're going to be earning 25% and let's be more optimistic. Let's assume it's going to be 15% and then 9% at year 10. That was a mistake. I should have put 15% in there, by the way. That's 1.34, 1.54, 1 1.54 Bitcoin. So you're doing a 3x on your Bitcoin here. And then let's assume they earn 25% all the way for 10 years. Let's assume their Bitcoin yield is going to be 25% each year for 10 years. Remember, it's going to be 50% this year. So bullish scenario, let's assume they can do 25% for 10 years. Then your 0.37 Bitcoin, spend 93 today, 93,000, get 0.37 Bitcoin, it turns into three Bitcoin. And, I, and actually closer, clo closer, closer to three and a half Bitcoin if you, if you assume they're going to do more like 25%-ish, right? So, so you almost 10x your Bitcoin if you assume a bullish scenario of how much Bitcoin yield they're going to be able to achieve. And so that is the key question. What is the Bitcoin yield going to be? Are they going to be able to keep earning Bitcoin yield into infinity? Right now, there's two main levers for value creation to the micro strategy story. One of them is ratio expansion. As we discussed, is the ratio of price to book or price to net asset value, is it going to be closer to a tech firm? If so, that ratio will expand. And then you pay a premium, but in exchange for that premium, you get a yield and you let the astute manager grow your Bitcoin pie for you by doing financial engineering and diluting less fast than they accrete. 
dilute the bit uh, dilute the number of shares slower when you add bitcoin to the balance sheets and so in most of these scenarios actually a yield over a decade probably and this is no financial advice but per my calculation assuming the price to book stays constant so assuming we stay at a 2.6 or 1.5 or 8 assuming no change in the price to book ratio over a long period over a decade period you should be better off over a decade period and you know that's not even assuming the compression of that ratio right because that ratio would probably have some compression so so anyways it, and it's tough to imagine uh, the price to book again going negative I, I have a hard time imagining the price to book going negative micro strategy trading at less than value of bitcoin so there's some downside protection but of course this is no financial advice nobody really knows for the long-term thesis of this company, the yield is essential and understanding what yield they're going to get is essential. And how long can they earn that yield? And so, first of all, for the next six years, I think it's, it's entirely reasonable to assume that they can earn that yield by taking advantage of a premium and issuing common stock. At, at the market, right? ATM offering common stock and buy 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 the Bitcoin, and they and and so they monetize the premium right there when they issue common stock to buy the Bitcoin, or they could monetize the volatility by issuing a convertible bond, and a convertible bond bond, bond is essentially capped upside in exchange for limited downsides in exchange for bondholders being quote unquote guaranteed a cash price floor because you wouldn't convert to shares if uh, if if the bitcoin was was down and if, if if the shares were worth less than your initial bonds you would not convert to the shares you would want the cash so so issuing a convertible bond you provide to to the market a floor a theoretical low floor but in exchange of that you get capped upside the bond buyer gets capped upside it's, it's the common stockholder who gets the upside of bitcoin so that's akin to monetizing the volatility and this is monetizing the premium i think this is the current phase and for the next six years it's likely that sailor will keep doing that now for the rest of the period right six years and beyond 20 30 and beyond my belief is that they're gonna move into bitcoin banking and I've covered this in my prior videos. There's multiple ways you can earn yield on Bitcoin without monetizing the volatility of a premium of the stock and without essentially shorting, es essentially taking advantage of the inefficiencies of traditional finance, which is what you know sailors doing right now. In 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 a more Bitcoinized world, Bitcoin banking, I firmly believe, will be a thing. What's one thing you could do? You could stake your Bitcoin for a fee equivalent to staking equivalent to interest you could stake your bitcoin on a bitcoin layer 2 like the lightning network lightning network or you could stake it on another layer 1 so you can stake your bitcoin on ethereum right it's wrapped btc and then on ethereum some people can use bitcoin on the ethereum network but you get a fee for listing that bitcoin on the ethereum network another thing you can do that i didn't talk about this but you can do the, the, the tether like strategy where you can issue a stable coin backed by your bitcoin right MicroStrategy could potentially think about issuing dollars backed by the bitcoin on their balance sheet that's part of a bitcoin banking theory that's one thing you can do another thing you can do is you can lend your bitcoin outright for liquidity to an exchange if you're familiar with decentralized exchanges in crypto you intuitively probably understand that you know what's called what is yield farming for example is say you would stake the the bitcoin to usdc pair and so let's assume microstrategy gets their hands on some usdc or usdt you create a pair of btc usdt and then you go list that pair on dexes or you can do outright lending of your btc to people who want to short so, so, so this is something you can do, land that Bitcoin for financial market activities. Then, quite simple, and we know Sailor has done that in the past, you could use your Bitcoin as a collateral to buy more Bitcoin. And so that would be akin to taking advantage of late adopting banks that have not caught on with the memo and, and, and that do not view Bitcoin as the future. Well, they would have an incentive to just accepting your Bitcoin as collateral and lending you some fiat. And then you could go ahead and buy more Bitcoin with that fiat. So that's another form of yield that they can earn. And then 
the most controversial of them all to all Bitcoin maximalists is the idea of lending actual Bitcoin. Giving up the keys is what I mean by that. And so, of course, it's a tough idea because this is something that hasn't been done since the medieval times, right? Double entry accounting made it so that most money lent after the 15 hundreds, uh, roughly, maybe a little earlier than that, most money lent was actually just an IOU, a piece of paper, or someone who claimed they had the gold, but they didn't have the gold, right? Well, you you could assume if we were going to move to a very hard money standard, or if, if we're the, the, the most important project, the most prized aspects of society operate on a fully hard money standard you could standard you could assume that medieval medieval style loans and medieval style interest makes a comeback this is what we would refer today as as shark loans but you know in the medieval era when you lent gold to a merchant who was about to travel you know thousands of miles away uh, the odds that you wouldn't see that gold ever again were pretty high and so the interest rates were you know, 50%. That wasn't uncommon. And so we could assume that a share of a Bitcoin gets lent at very, very, very high medieval style interest to compensate for the risk. But you would only lend this to the highest return projects. And you could assume some risk management, do some modeling and come up with a profitable business actually lending the keys to the Bitcoin. That's one aspect. Or you could lend at a more normal interest, yeah, let's say between 8 and 10%, but you would lend to, you know, more credible borrowers such as governments or too big to fail banks. And of course, the company, I believe, would never lend the entire Bitcoin. But, you know, if, if you lend a part of it, you could make money that way and continue the Bitcoin yield, continue earning that yield into decades to come. These are all available options for MicroStrategy. And that's why I recommend the, recommended the Cantor Fitzgerald speech that Michael Saylor did two days ago, where he, he shows great openness to the world of crypto like i have never seen him do before because that 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 collateral that digital gold that bitcoin is will be able to be turned into other instruments like wrapped bitcoin like minting usd on another blockchain like trading pairs for for dex and other types of, of exchanges. Um, it will en enable micro transactions. There's many things we could talk about. Um, and, 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 and of course, that's, that's something to be figured out in, in, in the future. This is not something for today. But Sailor, uh, to me, seems to be warming up, warming up to the idea. First, you start owning the land under Manhattan, and then you start building Manhattan. You take the crude oil, you know, the rock oil, the oil out of the rock, and you turn it into kerosene, and you turn it into gasoline, and you turn it into asphalt. But you do that later on. Applications of oil came later on, right? Oil, as we know it, was used in Roman times, but the, the later applications like kerosene came, came later on, and, and, and Manhattan was not used for skyscrapers. 300 years ago, these applications came later on. So now you buy the bedrock, you buy the Bitcoin. That's what MicroStrategy is doing. You buy the Bitcoin, you buy the bedrock. And then as the financial system evolves, something will be able to be built on that Bitcoin, built on that long-term capital use case that Bitcoin is. So anyways, this was not financial advice, not investment advice ever on this channel. This is just entertainment, especially with a high flyer like MicroStrategy, totally very much not financial advice please like please subscribe follow me on x follow me on patreon thank you for watching and have a wonderful day